Hi guys, and welcome back to Julie's Journey in Smart Factory Design Podcast. I'm Julie Zivetska, and today we're answering a simple question that everyone always asks. So what actually do we do? The answer, smarter systems, cleaner energy use, seamless automation. From wastewater recycling to modular production lines, we create intelligent environments where every machine, sensors and process is part of a larger plan. Joining me once again is our founder and CEO, Alexander Stepinski, and today we'll break down the technology behind the Smart Factory design model. So the first question will be what kind of products and services does Smart Factory design offer? So we offer engineering design services and investment planning services. This is the, the core of what we offer. We, we also get involved in some adjacent areas where the market is not performing. So if there's equipment gaps in the market that aren't being met, we'll, we'll partner with people to develop this, these solutions. Sometimes it's new suppliers, sometimes it's existing suppliers that we work with. Um, but essentially the first phase of what we do is always financial investment planning, feasibility of the investment. And then if the investment's approved, we go forward and we do the detailed engineering design for whether it's a process, whether it's a whole facility, uh, whether it's an R&D project, uh, that's, that, that's basically our service model. And then after the project is implemented or while it's being implemented, we also offer some supervision and uh, remote resourcing, you know, so on-site supervision, remote resourcing as needed to mm -hmm. realize the project. Yeah. So it's not just one system, uh, it's a module and flexible ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, for someone running a factory, that sounds exciting, uh, but also maybe overwhelming. Uh, what are the key benefits of integrating these advanced systems? Uh, so, I, I would say that uh, the biggest advantages are labor reduction, uh, cycle time reduction, waste reduction and general yield improvement. So, there's so many great technologies in the market that haven't been deployed into factories yet. We see this as our biggest uh, opportunity. And uh, over the past uh, few years, we've, we've gotten to the point now where we can make factories in the US and Europe that operate at lower cost than Asia. And, uh, but then at the same time in Asia, we can also reduce costs there. So, so how do we do it? Um, we, we do it with some circular economy solutions. So reusing things in the factory that normally get shipped out, stopping some purchases with some circular economy solutions. We do it with uh, improved, uh, I would say more autonomous work cells mm -hmm. where we're taking metrology feedback, doing some machine learning with it and, and making optimized recipes where uh, doing it with more stable processes. We've developed a lot of new controls for processes. So changeover costs are very low. Uh, CPKs are very high. So we, we have a lot of yeah. different solutions, wet process and dry process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So efficiency, sustainability and automation yeah. uh, and the ability to scale fast. But how do we, these systems actually reach the clients? Uh, what does the implementation process, process look like? So the, the first phase is the investment planning. So we go and we review their, their goals. You know, we typically review their product design in a lot of detail. So our, our big advantage is we're doing cross domain optimization. So we look at the product design, we looked at the process and we looked at, we look at whatever requirements the, the client has from a performance perspective, whether it's uh, speed, whether it's uh, just purely cost, they, they care less about speed, more about more about cost. So we, we, we optimize this in the investment planning phase for whatever the goals are. Mm -hmm. And usually with the clients that we have, the, the products are complex. So the product will be something new that the market's not very good at. That's why they're involved in it is because they're trying to industrialize a new product. 
whether it's a PCB or a component that goes on a PCB, multiple clients of ours, we have actually industrialized component manufacturing, not the PCB manufacturing. And then uh, the, the PCB manufacturing that we get involved with tends to be designs that most people struggle with. And we work on developing what's the optimized plan to differentiate the performance of this, mm -hmm. this product. That's what okay. So it's not a one size fits all product. Uh, it's a tailored strategic rollout. Uh, one thing we often highlight is our focus on sustainability. Uh, can you explain how Smart Factory Design integrates that into every project? Yeah, so sustainability, uh, the, the market says it's environmental sustainability typically, but we don't look at it this way. We look at it as business sustainability. And the environmental piece is, is a component of that. So the first thing is you need to make a profit. So if you're not making money, but everything's super green, it's not a good situation. You're not going to be around for long. Because the idea is to do whatever you're doing in an, in an efficient way. And where we focus is on profitability and green at the same time and environmental uh, stewardship at the same time and and typically they're not aligned usually the more environmentally conscious you are the lower the profits are mm -hmm. so we've really specialized in making su sustainability environmental stewardship profitable and we do this by reclaiming things so we reclaim different wastes we close loop chemical systems so that you don't buy chemistry and you're able to reuse what you have, you just purify it. But at the same time, when you have these closed loop systems that are designed the right way, you reduce the variation in the, in the chemistry significantly because you're not starting from scratch where you're mixing things together and making a, a bath. You have a bath, it just needs to be cleaned a little bit. And this process is typically uh, much more stable, much higher CPK than starting from scratch. So we leverage the these the systems to improve the overall capability of the factory. So our factories tend to have higher capability levels from a product perspective than than others. And so it, the kind of the idea is sa save uh, materials through reuse. By reusing and making things circular, you stabilize the process so you can make more capable designs that pay you more money. Mm -hmm. And also you have less variation in your process and it tends to help the cycle time because you can predict things better. Your recipes are more predictable and stuff like that. So all of these things add up to higher profit margins. Okay. Yeah. I love that. It's about building factories that are not just smarter, but also greener. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't realize how energy invent intensive and wasteful, wasteful traditional uh, manufacturing still is. Uh, we're changing that. Yeah, so can you give an example uh, of a factory or solution where our technology created measurable impact? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it, it's hard to give one example because every project that we do, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we tend to improve the ROI by at least 30 percent. OK, mm -hmm. or, or, or even the savings in many cases by over 30 percent. So um there's there's a few different categories of projects one is uh, a project where you're reshoring something to a western country and in these cases uh we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll look at the products that they're targeting we'll make sure the equipment's not over engineered it's customized for this technology band that they're they're focusing on and then we go and we do the detailed work at each step to optimize the cost structure and we don't stop till we get over the hurdle, whatever the investor's hurdle rate is. Say, okay, so we've, we've cut this much cost out. How much more due diligence do we need to reduce cost? What's the target? And um, so we, we always do this on all our projects. We, we make sure that all our projects are no-brainers from an investment perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really just applying all these different technological solutions, but also the cross-domain analysis. So when you have to build product X, Y, and Z, don't buy equipment that's designed for product A, B, and C. Don't buy all these extra features that you think maybe you'll use in the future, but you don't really need. Because the equipment suppliers tend to upsell this very well and cross-sell this very well. And at the end of the day, um, we, we kind of uh, help, help the client get sober on this mm -hmm. topic. 
and and really look at what's the incremental value, what's the marginal return on each of these features, what's the probability that they'll ever use these fancy features. So that, that's one aspect. The second aspect is uh, because we deal with uh, the whole world, we're involved in equipment from every region, suppliers from every region. We know the cost of the equipment. We're not we're not in a situation where, uh, you know, if I was in a circuit board shop, I would call a couple of people, get some competitive quotes and say, here's what we want. We, we actually go and find, oh, there's actually machines that are better than what you got in your little local silo with your with the reps because we travel so much and we, we, we find these things out. And then uh, th that that's a big part of the value is new equipment, but also equipment with promise. Like we see a, a machine that's been developed and if it was just changed a little bit, it would really provide a big return. So we make those agreements with suppliers too. Like, oh, you have this great new machine, but if you change X, Y, and Z, it'll be a huge return. And, and this is what we provide is, is we mm -hmm. kind of connect these dots for people and it really improves the mm -hmm. returns. Like providing a machine that just solves a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful strategy. Uh, numbers don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> and as we look to the future, uh, where do you see the next breakthroughs um, in smart factory technology coming from? Like, I mean, where do you see the future of smart manufacturing going in the next five to ten years? So from a technological perspective, we're at the point right now where I would say within the next one to two years, we are going to have uh, technological solutions in place for all processes to allow the factory to go dark. Mm -hmm. So totally autonomous without people. And then, then it comes down to realizing that, that vision. So I think in the next five to 10 years, we will have dark facilities around the world. Uh, are they all gonna be dark? No, it's gonna, tra the transition will be well underway in the next five to 10 years, where we have autonomous facilities that are without labor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Okay, so it's easy to talk about smart factories, but here you can actually see how the pieces fit together. Strategy meets hardware, sustainability meets automation. Thank you, Alex. It's exciting to hear how technology isn't just changing production, but reshaping entire industries. In our next episode, we will go deeper into one of the areas we specialize in, PCB factories, how they work, why they matter, and what we are doing to make them smarter than ever. Don't miss it. Thank you.